oldcamreview.com. I have a review for you today. Uh, it's one of my uh, one of my favorite cameras. It's a, uh, a Leica M6. This is a this is my Leica. This is my first Leica. Um, it's my only Leica, um, but I I really do enjoy it. I um, I you know experimented with a lot of different rangefinders, and uh, I really you know was always drawn to the. Uh, the, you know the like a mystique and all that and I was kind of intrigued by that and uh, you know by some tokens I was saying to myself well you know maybe it just is like a mystique and uh, it's just you know you know maybe there is something to it maybe there isn't um, I happen to be just really drawn to the camera I like the way the camera feels I like the way it you know you hold it in the hands though you know everything about it I actually I really do enjoy um, this is actually an early Leica M6 this is one of the first ones that came out, uh, it's what they call a Wetzlar version of it. Um, this can be identified as there's no bumpers on the side here and it says uh, Ernst Lights Wetzlar uh, GmbH on the, uh, the top of the camera. It's not a TTL um, M6 where it actually has a larger uh, shutter speed dial and uh, it, um, it, it doesn't meter, you know, it doesn't do TTL. Uh, flash metering it just syncs at uh, I believe it's 1 50th of a second um, you know like the cameras you know there's, there's you know a lot to them uh, there's a lot of cameras out there and there's as many d different opinions F you know actually more different opinions about uh, what uh, what makes a good Leica and what doesn't um, you know for me it's you know whatever camera speaks to you I'm not a, I'm not a brand loyal guy uh, per se I I like Canon stuff, I like Nikon, I like, you know, I just like nice cameras, I, and it doesn't really matter where they come from, and, um, you know, it is what it is, and you use a camera on its own merits, and I really like the look, the feel, everything about, about the M6. The M6 was a camera I wanted uh, for years and years and years, and I wanted the M6, and um, this is what I got. I mean, I could have gotten an M7, I could have gotten an M3, an M2, whatever, but this is the camera I want. This is the camera that spoke to me, so this is the one I picked. Um, and, you know, as, you know, with the cameras, there's many different, uh, you know, ways to go as far as getting glass is concerned. Of course, the Leica glass is phenomenal. Uh, it really is. I mean, if you look, you look at any stuff uh, made with Leica glass, it's great. But that's not to say that you can't get great pictures with other glass. It's not to say you can't get great pictures with other cameras. Again, what speaks to you is really what's important. Right on, on here, I, I don't have anything fancy. I have actually a, um, a, a, an FSU or a former Soviet Union uh, lens on here. It's a Jupiter 8. It's not an expensive lens. It was, I think it's maybe a $50 lens. But the, cam you know, the camera itself isn't the thing that makes the great pictures. It's, it's the person who takes the pictures or, uh, and stuff like that. The lens helps. These are tools. These are things that help you to get what you want. If the, the experience of using the camera helps you be more creative, I don't care what kind of camera it is, use that camera. Um, you know, these things are built hell for stout. They're just, it's solid, it's heavy, it's probably heavier than most uh, cameras out there. Uh, it, well, not most cameras out there. It's, it, it's a heavy, solid camera. I mean, they're, they're built, they're overbuilt, actually, the Leicas. Um, I like the viewfinder view here. I love rangefinders. Rangefinders are kind of my thing. Um, you know, not to say I don't like SLRs or digital SLRs. And I, I do. I like them. I have them. They're all good. It's just, uh, again, what speaks to you. So I like the view through the viewfinder. It has uh, different view uh, frame lines for different lenses. Uh, I happen to have a 50 on here, and this is a 50 f2, and it's actually a, a, a Zeiss copy. Um, is it as good as the Zeiss? I doubt it. Does it do what I want it to do? Absolutely. Um, and again, you know, the lens is what, what gives you the image quality. The camera really, when you're talking film, doesn't do much. I mean, it, you know, it's a black box with a, with a shutter. Um, but it does, the way it does it is, is really very nice. Give you a little tour around the camera. Film winder right here. I do have film in the camera. Actually, I'll, I'll burn a, a picture for you so you can hear and see it. Pause for a second.
Sorry for the jump in the video. I had to air conditioner. I had to turn off. It's getting a little warm in my apartment, but I had to turn it off. Anyway, here's a little tour around the camera, and I'll kind of you know explain a couple things for you here. Um, rewind knob is right here on top of the camera. This uh, you rewind your film uh, from here. Uh, some of the other like is you'll see like a vertical post sticking up. You pull that up and you rewind. In order to rewind your film, you also have to uh, push this uh, re uh, rewind release. Uh, switch over right here um, the uh, it's got a hot shoe on top uh, shutter speed dial going from bulb 1 2 4 8 15 30th 80th 1 25th 2 50th of a second 500th of a second and 1000th of a second that's as far as it goes that's it nothing faster um, Film counter right here uh, on the side, nice little glass window, very classy looking. Um, and uh, you know, it just it's Leicas are basic cameras. You're not going to get a lot of features. You're not going to get a lot of bells and whistles or anything. They're just they don't have it. Uh, PC port on the back right here. Um, ISO setting. Uh, the nice thing and one thing I do like about the M6 is it does have a meter built in, and it's a good meter. Um, so you know if you're, you're not left guessing you don't have to do sunny 16 rule and, and if you do do that that's great and you can just get some confirmation a lot of people buy the m3s and they'll buy an additional meter to put on top it's another 200 bucks you know there's nothing but there's nothing wrong with shooting however you want to shoot so um, aperture on the front is always controlled on a Leica um, on an M series certainly controlled by an aperture ring and then on the back you have a focus ring here uh, and again we've talked about split image before so when you're looking through let's pretend this is one hand uh, while you're looking through the viewfinder you're gonna see the image kind of going back and forth as you focus when the image aligns that's when you're in focus that's range finder focusing and what happens there is uh, there's three windows on top here. This is your main viewfinder, which is viewing directly through the camera. Uh, this is a, sort of a, a light window. So light will come into this window to illuminate uh, the frame lines, which are, are superimposed in your viewfinder. And this is the, uh, uh, the, the other picture window, uh, which, which they call coincident window. And this is the second window that overlays the image on here. So as this turns, these two mirrors align depending upon the distance of the subject to your camera. Um, uh, so yeah, that's basic operation there. There is a, this is a battery operated camera for the meter only. There's, you don't need to have a battery in this camera to use it. Uh, you, have a, you have to have a battery in the camera to use the light meter, but the light meter is, is just a light meter. It, uh, you know, it uh, uh, doesn't adjust anything on the camera. It doesn't adjust your shutter speed. It doesn't adjust your aperture. It doesn't do any of that. It just tells you whether or not you have what they consider to be a proper exposure. Um, the bottom of the camera here is basically one base plate. This camera doesn't flip open as you would see on like a Yashica or uh, the Minolta Hymatics or pretty more most film cameras. This does not flip open. What happens is you turn this knob. Again, I have film in this, so I'm not gonna not gonna open it. I'll, I'll maybe throw it in uh, at another point and how to load the film. But you flip you flip this lever open here. I'll go that far. Here you open that and then you would turn it and this base plate lifts off uh, and then you would put your film in this side of the camera and then there's this door here this this door opens up and you would thread your film you would actually extend it thread your film and then there's a take up reel on this side so you kind of drop your film in here and this is i mean it's actually a fairly quick loading system people complain about how complicated it is but it really is and you can actually get pretty quick with it and uh, there's a, a lug here where the base plate attaches to so you hook this side of the um, base plate onto the lug and then lower it down onto the camera and then you would lock that down and then you would set your ASA or your ISO exposure here on the uh, on the back and that's going to affect your your light meter uh, readings and, and you know and, and it does read uh, does read the light I mean obviously and I'm going to do is I'm going to take this lens off and I'm going to show you how that works this white dot here is the actual spot that the meter is reading off of and there's like a little uh, I don't know if it's a uh, I guess it's just a sensor that looks down at that dot from inside the camera and it, it just it tells 
the camera how much light is hitting the film plane, which is kind of nice. Um, so it's reading off of the film plane uh, and not reading directly into the meter, which that's kind of an interesting way of doing it, and I, I kind of like it. Um, you know, it's so it's 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 going to read as closely as it can to what the film is going to be seeing, and I think that's. Um, you know, it, it, it certainly contributes to the accuracy of the meter in, in this camera. And this, this meter is excellent. I've uh, been very, very, very happy with the meter on this. Uh, lenses uh, to take off and on. This is a release button here. There's a small red dot. I have an adapter. This is, a, this is actually a thread mount lens for an older, uh, like a thread mount camera. And what I did was is I purchased this adapter. Actually, I'm gonna, I have take it off to put it on the camera but um, basically the adapter you can adapt any like a thread mount lens to an M body so uh, you can get thread mount lenses cheaper um, there are no Leica lenses that are cheap um, there are they are relatively cheaper than other <laughs> other lenses but Leica glass is outrageous um, I'd say the FSU or the, or the former uh, Soviet Union lenses are probably the least expensive way in if you've spent your money on a body and you need to get an inexpensive lens I would get a Russian lens um, this is a Jupiter 8 it's a great lens I really like it uh, I like the tone the softness it kind of gives it a little bit of a retro feel um, and you know depending upon what film you use you know the colors can really you know pop on it or they can be you know more mellow and subdued depending upon what film you're using but uh, as far as the accuracy of, of the photo and sharpness I've been pretty pleased with it uh, if you wanted to certainly look up uh, Jupiter 8 um, you can get an idea of, of what the lens is like you know again it's not the highest end lens in the world but it you know it certainly does the trick um, what else do I need to show you on here this here is a lever for previewing for frame lines and what happens is is the Leica cameras automatically adjust, I'll see if I can show you this when I put on the lens, automatically adjust the, fr the frame lines depending upon what lens you put on. So this is a 50 millimeter lens and this, when I put this onto the camera, watch this lever here. So I'm going to put this on here and watch, the, I don't know if, I'm hoping you can see it, but I'll put it on here and I'll turn it and you'll see uh, that lens moves and clicks right into place and it, what it does is it shows you that frame line for the lens, so that automatically adjusts. Kind of a nice thing. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll, I'm, I'll burn off one round just so you can see, uh, you know, how the camera sounds when you uh, when you you know press the the shutter release. Leicas are known to be, you know, super quiet, and there's some sort of like stealthy mystique about it. They're a lot quieter cameras than the Leica. Leicas is quiet, but again, I don't think it's necessarily the. <clears throat> I don't think it's the quietness of, of the shutter. I don't think it's especially quiet, but I think uh, the tone or the sound that it makes is not as high frequency. It's not as very metallic. It's more uh, sort of a dull click, which is, for, you know, it's, it's not going to be like, you know, a sharp, you know, snapping sound. It's it's more of a thunk. But uh, let's put this, I'm going to put it at 1 25th of a second. It's already wound. And then we're just going to hit the shutter and I'm, I'm hoping you guys can hear it. Actually, I'll hold it up. This is actually fairly close to the mic, so uh, it might, it's probably going to sound louder or softer, I don't know, we'll see, than what it really is. So, yeah, it's just kind of a soft, dull click. It, it's, it's really nice. And when you wind the camera, it's got a very nice wind to it, too. It's just everything that's subtle, it's smooth, it's buttery, it's like... It's a, it's a well-made machine. It's it's uh, you know it's definitely crafted and, and put together very carefully. Um, really, I don't know. I, I think you gotta you gotta try it to really to really see what I'm talking about. If you have the opportunity, pick a Leica up, pick up an M6 or an M3 or an M7, um, check it out, play with it. Uh, everything feels pretty good. You know the way the the uh, uh, shutter speed dial clicks into place. It's very deliberate and precise you don't have it doesn't take a lot of work but it's it's solid everything is just solid it's just well put together like you know like a Mercedes is well put together or you know uh, any kind of quality it's definitely a quality built camera not to say that the Japanese cameras aren't quality but it's a different type of quality this is overbuilt um, and it's uh, there's a lot of thought that I think went into a lot of stuff you know they 
it's not perfect, but it uh, for what it is, it's 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 pretty darn good. So anyway, that's uh, that's it. The Leica M6. I'm by no means a Leica expert. I'm not a Leica historian, but I know a little bit. So if you have any questions, uh, and again, if you have any questions on anything, I'll try and answer you as soon as I can. Uh, I actually haven't put up any uh, videos recently. I've been having some technical difficulties with my computer. So um, hopefully I'll get back onto my uh, review a week schedule. But uh, anyway, here it is. The Leica M6. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, definitely highly recommend it. It's expensive though, you know. Uh, if you want to spend that kind of money, great. You got to really want it though. So, anyway, that's it. Brian Old Cam Review, the Leica M6. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Actually.